Hi guys, I'm Borna, your organic chemistry tutor, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In the past few months, I started noticing that, for lack of better words, my services appeal to a more financially privileged class of people, and I started to think about ways that I could reach farther and reach more people because I believe everyone is entitled to um, quality education. So I decided to do two things. First, I'm starting this YouTube channel uh, on which I'll be posting solved practice problems so it would be available to everyone for free. And if I feel this is helping people, I'd be more than willing to keep making these videos as much as I have time. So by the end of this video, if you enjoyed, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The second thing that I'm doing is that I started offering a service in which I answer your questions. Uh, so if you have a question or if you're struggling with a concept or something, contact me. Uh, what I will do is that I'll make a video for you just like this one in which I answer your question and I send it to you. Um, you can share it with your friends and watch it as many times as you want in your own time. Um, and I thought it'll help me reach more people and it'll be more affordable since it doesn't take me as long uh, to answer these questions. All right. Um, I'll post a link to my Facebook page down in the description below. So if you have a question or need a tutor, please contact me. The only thing is that I refuse to help students cheat. Um, so please don't ask for that. The problem that I'm doing today was sent to me by Rachel from Wilmington, Delaware, and she kindly allowed me to publish this video on YouTube. So here we go. So the question is, which one of these cyclohexane isomer or substitute cyclohexane isomer is more stable a or b to answer this question what i have to do is that i have to draw the chair confirmation so this is a this is b i have to draw the two chair confirmations um available for both of these isomers and um, basically decide which one is the more stable chair confirmation for each isomer and then compare the energy of the more stable chair conformation of each isomer to that of the other one. So let's do that. So to draw the chair conformation of a substituted cyclohexane isomer, I usually like to number the carbon atoms to make sure that I don't get confused. Uh, and this is pretty arbitrary so long as I stay consistent. I just uh, decided to start numbering here, and that's totally fine. And now I draw the two chair conformations that are going to be related to one another by a chair flip and i need to translate the numbering over it doesn't matter where i start i just need to make sure that when i do a chair flip i don't mess up the numbering so i'm going to start say here for instance so one two three four five six um when i do a chair flip carbon number six from being a footrest goes to becoming a backrest. So this is gonna be carbon number six. Carbon number three goes from being a backrest for the chair to being a footrest for the, for the chair. Um, on the closer part of the ring, I have carbon number two and carbon number one connecting three and six. So one and two are still going to be here. And on the far part of the ring, I have number four and I have number five. All right. So let's see what we have on our cyclohexane ring isomer A. So on carbon number one, I have a methyl that is pointing up. So carbon number one itself is a carbon that is above the mean plane of the ring. So if I have a chair cyclohexane like this, these carbons are going to be above the mean plane of the ring and these are going to be below the main plane of the uh, the mean plane of the ring, and if a carbon is below the main plane of the ring, the axial substituent on that carbon is going to be pointing down, and if a carbon is pointing upwards or like is above the mean plane of the ring, the axial substituent on that carbon is going to be pointing upwards. So with that in mind, since on carbon number one. I have a methyl that is pointing up as above the ring. And um, considering the fact that carbon number one is pointing upwards and is above the mean plane of the ring, I have an axial methyl. On carbon number three, I have a methyl that is pointing down. 
and since carbon number three is pointing up, the substituent that is going to be pointing down is going to be equatorial. On carbon number four, I have an isopropyl, and that isopropyl is going to be pointing down. And because of the fact that carbon number four is below the mean plane of the ring, isopropyl is going to be axial. And this is not a particularly good or stable chair confirmation because I have two axial substituents. So I'm going to box them with purple. And once I do a chair flip, um, remember, so when you do a chair flip, the upward down aspect of a substituent doesn't alter. The only thing that alters is whether or not uh, or whether they're axial or equatorial. So in carbon number one, I still have a methyl that is pointing up, but given the fact that carbon number one is pointing down itself, that it means the methyl is going to be equatorial. In carbon number three, I have a methyl that is pointing down, carbon number three is pointing down, so that methyl has to be axial. In carbon number four, that is pointing up, I have an isopropyl that is pointing down, so that isopropyl has to be equatorial. As you can see, this is a much better um, chair confirmation because it only has one axial substituent and that's a methyl. So with that said, I'm gonna mark this as the more stable chair confirmation of isomer A and that it mean that isomer A or molecules of isomer A are going to spend most of their time in this form or as this chair confirmation. Now let's do the same analysis um, for isomer B. So let's draw the two chair confirmations. Again, let's do a numbering. This time around, I'd like to start numbering here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, when I'm drawing a chair confirmation, it doesn't matter where I start numbering. It just matters that I keep that numbering system consistent. So if I start numbering here, one, two, three, four, five, six, that'll translate to six, three, and then four, five, two, one, as I explained above. On carbon number one, I have an isopropyl that is pointing down, is below the mean plane of the ring. So that would mean that in this chair confirmation, that is going to be equatorial because carbon number one is pointing upwards. So that's that. On carbon number two, I have a methyl that is pointing up. Carbon number two is pointing down. So that methyl is going to be equatorial. I think I said the isopropyl is axial. I meant equatorial, if I said that. Um, on carbon number four, I have a methyl that is pointing up. So that it means it has to be axial. So this is a perfect chair confirmation, actually, uh, for practical purposes, because I don't have any axial um, um, substituent. And given the fact that when you do a chair flip, the axial uh, substituents become equatorial and vice versa, that it mean if I perform a chair flip on this, all these equatorial substituents will become axial, which is terrible in terms of energy. But let's just um, do it to make sure that actually happens. So on carbon number one, I have an isopropyl pointing down. That has to be equatorial because carbon number one is pointing down. Carbon number two, I have a methyl pointing upwards. Carbon number four, I have a methyl pointing upwards. Um, both are upwards pointing carbon, so the axial substituent has to be pointing up. And that would mean that all the three substituents are axial, and that um, causes a tremendous amount of strain in this system, and that's not desirable at all. So that would mean that this isomer actually, or sorry, this chair confirmation is the more stable chair confirmation of this isomer. So that it mean this molecule will spend majority of its time in this chair confirmation. So in order to compare the stability of isomer A and isomer B, we'd like to be comparing their respective most stable chair confirmation which is this for isomer B. And or 
Oops, rather. this for isomer A. And given the fact that the more stable chair conformation of isomer A still has an axial substituent, whereas the more stable chair conformation of isomer B has everything equatorial, then isomer B has to be the more stable isomer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.